Grazie uh, Federica. Um, I would like to, uh, to thank you uh, to Atomium for um, this great uh, opportunity uh, to be um, member in uh, automotive committee and uh, also uh, chairman of energy committee. Actually, uh, I'm uh, uh, very proud to, to open this working session, uh, number seven, about energy, which is um, the last one, but not the least. And uh, I will uh, um, yeah, start with um, uh, the outline of our presentation. Uh, actually, um, I will start with um, a short introduction today, uh, uh, highlighting the preliminary timeline and phases. Uh, I will uh, um, show you a little bit uh, um, what we have done uh, during this year. After that, I will uh, uh, present members. Uh, I will give you a short presentation about uh, energy committee members. Then I will move to our final uh, report. I will talk about the contents uh, and uh, um, yes, a little bit. I will highlight uh, uh, the core um, and the most important uh, uh, things from our point of view. Um, definitely uh, in the core of this report, uh, uh, we have the seven key requirements uh, in energy uh, sector. Uh, here, we try to highlight uh, two important issues uh, to answer uh, to these uh, uh, two questions actually. How do the seven key requirements impact uh, the energy uh, sector? And what does the energy sector must uh, do to be compliant with um, the seven key requirements? Uh, after that, uh, uh, we will present some uh, applications of artificial intelligence based on uh, seven key requirements uh, in the energy sector. Um, also, we selected some uh, case uh, studies uh, to uh, be able, yes, to the end, uh, to draw some conclusions and uh, recommendations. And after that, uh, uh, after our presentation, uh, we would like to, uh, to have a discussion, a discussion about our uh, report uh, to get some feedbacks uh, from you. Um, so uh, we would like to, uh, to know um, what is missing from our report, uh, uh, how uh, do you believe that we can improve it, and maybe we can get some, uh, some comments from industry sector as well. So I will, uh, uh, I will start with uh, um, our um, uh, committee members. Uh, um, initially, we uh, actually we started uh, with seven members, but we lost uh, two of them uh, on the way. Um, Fausto uh, Pedro Garcia Marquez uh, is a full professor at Castilla de la Mancha University in Spain. Uh, Ron Kennedy is uh, a lecturer in law at the National University of uh, Ireland, Galway. Uh, Sergio Saponara is uh, a professor in electronics engineering at the University of Pisa in Italy. Afzal Siddiq is professor uh, in Department of Computer and System Sciences uh, in Stockholm, uh, Sweden, and also uh, he is professor in the Department of Mathematics and Systems Analysis in Finland at uh, Alto University. Uh, Robert uh, Madeline, I don't uh, have to say too much about everybody knows him. Uh, so he is uh, um, one of uh, uh, the former general director, uh, DG Connect, um, and uh, uh, also, yes, the European Commission. Uh, uh, he is with the Oxford University Center for uh, Technology. Okay, I will come back to, uh, actually, I will come back to this uh, slide a little bit uh, uh, later. Uh, right now, I uh, uh, just would like to, um, yes, to highlight, uh, uh, to go a little bit uh, uh, farther, yes, and uh, uh, to say a few words about uh, each of our members. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, Fausto is uh, a full professor uh, in Spain, uh, uh, with, uh, uh, yes, he was a honorary senior uh, research fellow uh, at Birmingham University in UK, a lecturer at, uh, at the Postgraduate European Institute. Um, um, he is the director of uh, Ingenium Group. Uh, also, he has been distinguished with a lot of uh, rewards, a lot of uh, prizes. Uh, they are mentioned here. He published uh, a lot of papers, more than 150. He, uh, hold also six uh, uh, patents uh, 
He is uh, uh, the editor of uh, five international journals and uh, uh, principal investigator in four European projects uh, like uh, uh, FP7 Horizon 2020. Okay, uh, uh, the, second, uh, the second member, uh, Sergio Saponara, as I uh, mentioned before, uh, he is professor in electronics engineering uh, and president of the bachelor and master programs in electronic engineering at the University of Pisa in Italy. Um, Sergio is a full professor uh, since uh, 2017 uh, at the University of Pisa. Uh, he joined this university in 2005. Um, he is also co-founder and scientific advisor of uh, a small medium entity in, in Italy, uh, engineers, uh, um, yes, engineers, if I pronounce correct, I'm sorry, Sergio, if I, I don't. Um, and uh, uh, since uh, 2020, uh, he is also director of uh, uh, the specialization course in automotive electronics and powertrain electrification. Um, Sergio published uh, uh, a lot of papers, more than 300. Uh, he is uh, um, right now a steering committee and work package leader for cybersecurity of Horizon 2020 uh, European processor initiatives and uh, uh, a distinguished uh, lecturer of uh, IEEE. Um, okay, uh, uh, the third one, um, Ronan Kennedy is lecturer in law at the uh, National University of Ireland, Galway, and director of uh, LLB program uh, with uh, a degree in commerce system analysis and law. Uh, very interesting, uh, uh, also, uh, uh, he worked in software development and network uh, administration. Um, also, uh, he was executive uh, legal officer um, between 2000 and 2004. Um, he is a, a project investigator um, of six uh, research projects. And uh, as you can see here, uh, his research interest is connected with um, ICT law which uh, actually um, uh, help us a lot uh, because uh, um, we are uh, professors, engineers, uh, uh, most of us, and uh, uh, he came here with um, uh, his experience uh, connected with, uh, uh, with the law and uh, regulations. Uh, the next uh, uh, speaker uh, and member of our committee, Afzal Siddiq, um, is professor uh, in the Department of Computer and System Sciences uh, in Sweden, Stockholm University, and um, adjunct professor in the Department of uh, Mathematics and System Analysis in Finland, uh, Aalto University. So impressive, uh, uh, yes, you, you, you have uh, two jobs in two different countries. Uh, his research on uh, application of game theory to assess environment policy in the power sector. He published uh, more than 60 papers uh, uh, and two books. He is also project investigator uh, on seven research grants, including uh, uh, FP7 uh, European projects. And uh, uh, as you can see here, uh, Afzal um, has a great international um, experience, a great international, um, um, yes, uh, he, he uh, was working with uh, um, different universities from US, uh, uh, University of California, uh, also from Europe, University College Dublin, University College London. Um, also, he was visiting professor uh, in Canada. And uh, uh, since 2011, uh, until now, uh, he is uh, um, actually professor in the Department of Computer and System Sciences uh, in Stockholm University, at Stockholm University in uh, Sweden. And as I mentioned before, uh, also is professor in the Department of uh, Mathematics and Systems at Aalto University in Finland. Uh, regarding uh, uh, Robert, uh, Robert uh, uh, Madeline is a member uh, of uh, AI for People Scientific uh, Committee and former director, uh, General DigiConnect. Uh, he is also the chairman of uh, uh, FIPA International. Uh, the International Advisory uh, Council of uh, Teladoc Health. He is a non-executive uh, director at Medisante Group uh, and a consultant to Plus Value. Uh, Robert was uh, educated in 
UK in England and is uh, a graduate from both uh, the University of Oxford and French Ecole uh, National de Administration. Yeah, if I pronounce correct, uh, uh, Robert has an impressive uh, um, activity connected uh, with the European uh, Union, um, actually over uh, 35 years as a UK and then European Union public servant. Uh, uh, he was a trade uh, negotiator for over 20 years and the European Commission Director General for, uh, for 12. Okay, and uh, after, uh, yes, uh, I presented all my members, I guess uh, I became very, very small. Uh, my name is uh, uh, Lucian Mihat. I'm professor in energy technology, uh, project manager, head of research group, uh, uh, intelligent control of energy conversion and storage system, and one of uh, the coordinator of the master program in green uh, energy technology. I'm professor in Norway at Oswald University College. I'm an electrical engineer with uh, a master degree uh, in power electronics and electric drives. My PhD was connected with uh, wind turbine applications and uh, my habilitation with uh, smart grids. I also published uh, uh, many papers, uh, more than uh, 100. This is one of my uh, favorite jobs. Actually, my favorite task. Uh, I, uh, I was involved in many research projects, uh, international projects like FP7, uh, Horizon 2020, I participated in more than 15 and uh, 10 national uh, research projects as well, Norwegian research projects, uh, yes, for instance. And uh, my research interest includes, uh, uh, among others, modeling, simulation, control, and testing of renewable energy sources, uh, smart grids, uh, including here energy storage systems and uh, electric vehicles, but also energy efficiency in, uh, in smart buildings. Okay, and now I will move to, um, to our activities. First of all, uh, preliminary uh, timeline. Uh, we uh, started um, uh, to work uh, um, this year um, in Energy Committee. Uh, the first meeting was in March. Uh, we had um, already five meetings. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, during uh, these uh, three phases, actually, uh, we try to develop uh, our um, our report. And uh, uh, yes, uh, uh, I'm going to, to talk about um, our final version of this report. Um, I uh, highlighted here a little bit uh, uh, the contents of uh, uh, our report. Uh, uh, as you can see, uh, actually, we started to focus on seven key requirements. Uh, uh, this is, uh, uh, let's say, the main um, um, yes, the main and the most important uh, uh, thing we, we, we focus on in this report uh, started from, from seven key requirements. We try to connect uh, um, these requirements step by step uh, with uh, the energy sector based on uh, different applications coming from uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, we also selected uh, some topics uh, coming from um, energy industry is uh, is very difficult to to select uh, uh, to cover all these uh, topics. Uh, we believe that, uh, for instance, uh, uh, smart grids or uh, smart homes. Uh, uh, just to give uh, two examples, uh, electricity trading, uh, yes, are very important, and that's why uh, you can see in uh, my presentation and in our report. Uh, Yes, many connections, applications coming from, uh, from these topics. So you can find all these details in chapter two. After that, um, we try to, uh, to define some uh, uh, concrete and practical steps uh, in chapter three, to, uh, which are based on uh, different case studies to be able to, to draw some conclusions uh, to the end. Uh, and uh, this is uh, um, actually uh, connected with the uh, chapter number four, where we have uh, some practical uh, uh, recommendations. Um, now uh, uh, I will highlight a little bit uh, uh, the aim and outlines uh, of our report. Um, we started to focus uh, uh, on seven key requirements. Actually, um, we try to answer uh, 
to these two questions, uh, uh, we got these requirements from the beginning. How the seven key requirements impact uh, the energy sector on one side, and on the other side, uh, what uh, the energy sector must do to be compliant with uh, the seven key requirements. Um, to be able to answer to these questions, uh, uh, to the first one, uh, we defined some concrete objectives considering the impact. And here uh, I would mention uh, uh, some of uh, um, the most important topics uh, uh, connected with, um, such as uh, machine learning, uh, uh, how machine learning, artificial intelligence, big data, for instance, transform the way we work in order to be prepared for industry for zero. Uh, what kind of tools, which tools are available uh, right now uh, connected with, which are suitable for. And based on this, we um, actually uh, defined some uh, uh, focus on some applications of artificial intelligence. And of course, uh, uh, trying to highlight uh, the contributions to energy sector transformation. For the second question, we, uh, um, we try to uh, to define some uh, practical steps uh, based on some, some case studies. These case studies are coming from, um, from industry, are coming some of them from ongoing projects because we, uh, we wanted to uh, actually um, to draw some conclusions based on um, different activities uh, coming from, uh, from industry. Okay, so I will, uh, um, yes, I will continue with the, uh, um, with our uh, report saying that uh, uh, this was the key, uh, uh, the key and uh, the starting point, uh, the seven key requirements in energy industry. We try to connect this with uh, artificial intelligence uh, in energy industry step by step. And uh, uh, to start with, uh, with the first uh, key requirement, uh, um, just to give you some examples here, for instance, uh, the first key requirement, it is about uh, human agency and oversights. So here uh, it is including uh, fundamental rights, human agency and human oversights. In our opinion, uh, the most important uh, fundamental rights uh, that companies within the energy sector should consider are dignity and uh, non-discrimination, but also uh, personal data and privacy protection, which is uh, actually something uh, uh, something very sensitive. Okay, uh, uh, to the end of uh, our uh, report in, uh, uh, in chapter four, uh, you can see our uh, practical recommendations connected with uh, the first uh, uh, key requirement. Um, we highlighted uh, the fact that uh, uh, artificial intelligence in energy industry must uh, take account of the fact that individuals and groups uh, will have uh, uh, divergent uh, but still legitimate goals and uh, uh, allow the possibility of existence, existing uh, choices. So uh, we should be uh, uh, flexible here. Um, AI must, uh, must enable for sure better, more informed human decision-making and not uh, to take uh, away the control. Um, Related to uh, human uh, uh, oversights, uh, yes, I will, uh, I will say only that um, this is uh, an important uh, uh, mechanism in our opinion for identifying uh, security uh, breaches and risks. Uh, it's very important uh, uh, in this case to define which is the risk and therefore uh, the systems uh, should, be, uh, uh, should be both uh, uh, audit, uh, able and uh, regularly uh, audited. So this is the first uh, um, uh, the first key requirement. Uh, I will uh, I will move to uh, to the second one. The second uh, uh, requirement is uh, more technical. I would say uh, it is uh, uh, about technical robustness and safety. Uh, in this uh, uh, requirement, uh, it is including uh, resilience to attack and uh, security, a fallback plan and general safety, accuracy, reliability, but also uh, reproducibility. So uh, uh, we uh, believe that uh, um, connected with uh, this second uh, key requirement, uh, uh, for instance, uh, cyber attack uh, is very, very important. 
uh, to highlight uh, uh, this, uh, we um, actually uh, believe that uh, uh, artificial intelligence uh, will have a key role here. Uh, this technology should contribute uh, uh, to the improvement of safety and technical robustness, as well as uh, to identify and mitigate uh, different faults along the way, um, including, of course, uh, those connected with uh, cyber attacks. Um, in our opinion, this is, uh, uh, this is one of the most important uh, issues coming from, from industry. Um, we have seen many, many examples connected with. Uh, that's why uh, um, in terms of uh, uh, technical robustness and safety, uh, including here all parts of energy system, which are production, trading, distribution, storage, and utilization, this should be supported by uh, predictive health maintenance technologies, uh, which are, uh, yes, uh, uh, we have some, um, uh, some uh, interesting examples here uh, with some uh, uh, case studies uh, defining uh, the predictive uh, health maintenance uh, in our report and also uh, today in, um, in our presentation. Connected with the, uh, the second uh, key requirement, we have some, uh, some practical recommendations, um, which are based on uh, artificial intelligence techniques, uh, which can be used, uh, for instance, to keep the grid uh, in balance um, and uh, to keep it stable and for predictive uh, maintenance. So this is also very important from our point of view. Uh, for energy trading, uh, for instance, uh, to find the right compromise between energy production, selling price, user consumption in a free but transparent energy market. Uh, regarding to uh, this kind, this cyber attack I, I, I already mentioned a few times, uh, uh, we believe that it's very important uh, yes, to provide a fallback plan which is able to, to ensure safety of the energy system. Uh, we also believe that uh, uh, AI-based uh, fingerprinting and uh, uh, anomaly detection can be used for not only energy production, storage, and distribution plans, but also to detect incipient faults, to detect different uh, uh, anomalies, uh, which are um, definitely are connected with um, storage distribution uh, plans, for instance. And uh, uh, we uh, we can uh, detect these faults uh, during energy trading sessions for a transparent energy market. So uh, um, this is about uh, uh, the second uh, second key requirement. I will uh, I will move a little bit farther uh, to the third uh, key requirement, which is about uh, privacy and data governance, uh, including here respect for privacy, quality, and integrity of data. We have some. Uh, uh, we defined some interesting uh, case studies here, uh, actually um, also in our presentation uh, a little bit later, as we will uh, discuss about uh, this issue. So to give uh, the energy industry and uh, in particular end user consumer more confidence in artificial intelligence, we believe that uh, it must be clearly communicated how the data are used and by whom. This is one, uh, one of uh, our uh, recommendation, actually. It is connected with uh, how the data uh, is used and by whom. I think uh, it's, it's very important. And uh, this is connected, of course, with uh, GDPR. Uh, we uh, try to, to highlight uh, a few examples coming from different uh, European countries uh, connected with uh, privacy and um, data, data governance. We have some uh, some recommendations for um, the last uh, for this uh, uh, um, requirement uh, to give uh, the energy industry and uh, uh, in particular to, to end user consumers more confidence in artificial intelligence. Uh, for instance, uh, connected with the uh, smart home technologies, smart meters, uh, or home energy management. Um, or uh, how to optimize uh, the charging infrastructure in a smart recharging grid. It must be, as I mentioned before, uh, it must be clearly communicated how the data 
uh, are used and by whom. And this, uh, uh, yes, uh, in meantime, yes, uh, uh, the data security uh, must be warranted as well. Um, there should be uh, clear security requirements connected with, uh, with this issue uh, in electricity markets uh, to ensure data, uh, data uh, integrity, uh, to ensure uh, confidentiality and also, uh, yes, authentication along uh, the whole chain of data acquisition, processing and storage. So uh, uh, we will uh, uh, give some, uh, uh, some examples uh, connected with the uh, different countries, as I mentioned, uh, because, uh, uh, for instance, uh, uh, we have some cases from UK, but not only. And we will uh, uh, discuss a little bit uh, uh, later about uh, this issue. Uh, regarding the fourth uh, key requirement, uh, which is connected with uh, transparency, including here uh, traceability, explainability and uh, communication, uh, we have uh, uh, very, very interesting uh, 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 case studies um, in, uh, in our presentation a little bit later. Uh, these are uh, connected with uh, um, different applications coming from artificial intelligence related to uh, its acceptance, which will depend on, of course, transparency. Uh, that's why uh, energy systems, uh, uh, we believe that energy system uh, systems should adopt uh, a blockchain technology for uh, traceability. Related to this uh, uh, force uh, key requirement, we believe that uh, uh, we have to consider existing uh, expertise uh, together uh, with uh, uh, advanced uh, um, algorithms, uh, with uh, algorithmic uh, advanced in inverse optimization, uh, to be able to, to use by uh, uh, auditors uh, to unveil how artificial intelligence application function in the energy sector and to ensure to the end uh, uh, that uh, their use is in line with social objectives. So uh, uh, we have uh, an interesting example coming from Germany uh, in, uh, um, co and connected with uh, this uh, uh, force uh, key requirement. Uh, we will present it a little bit uh, uh, later uh, because, uh, uh, yes, we, uh, we believe that um, this kind of um, good practices uh, are very welcome um, in uh, not only connected with energy uh, sector, but also, yes, with, uh, uh, with the others. Related to uh, uh, the fifth key requirement, which is about uh, diversity, non-discrimination and fairness, um, Connected with uh, diversity problem, uh, this is about uh, gender, race, and most fundamentally about power and energy in our case. Uh, definitely it affects uh, how artificial intelligence companies work, which uh, uh, products get built, who they are designed to serve, and who benefits from, from their development. Uh, connected with uh, uh, this issue, uh, we highlighted uh, some um, um, uh, algorithms which are connected with uh, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, machine learning, uh, Internet of Things, and uh, yes, this kind of uh, um, yes algorithms, which which are um, um, yes uh, helping us to create uh, human rights uh, in a better way, uh, and uh, uh, such as the right to non-discrimination. So uh, connected with the. Uh, uh, with this, uh, um, yes, the fifth uh, uh, requirement here uh, related to the private uh, uh, sector, um, we believe that uh, the algorithmic decision making can have uh, discriminatory effects. For instance, uh, AI can be used by firms to select employees, while uh, targeted online advertising is largely driven by uh, algorithmic decision making. So uh, uh, we have to uh, we have to be very careful with uh, um, how to select these algorithms, uh, and uh, of course uh, uh, this should be done based on uh, different issues such as um, discrimination. Related to uh, this uh, uh, key requirement um, number five, in order to to ensure uh, non-discriminatory programming and functioning. Systems uh, needs to be created 
trained it, sorry, and tested yes, for unfair bias. We uh, believe that uh, um, the companies should test their algorithms for bias and discrimination. And uh, based on this, uh, they can demonstrate that certain fairness standards are met. Um, we know that uh, uh, there are some, some lack of uh, uh, standardizations connected with uh, artificial intelligence. We try to, uh, to highlight uh, some, some standards. Uh, uh, you can find um, our suggestions uh, to, to the end of uh, our report. So, for instance, uh, connected with the, um, the fifth uh, key requirement, uh, we uh, mention IEEE standard uh, P7003, which is connected with uh, uh, algorithmic bias uh, uh, considerations, uh, lays out relevant uh, instructions for eliminating uh, uh, these issues connected with uh, negative bias when uh, deploying uh, different uh, type of algorithms. Okay, connected with uh, uh, the uh, sixth uh, key requirement, uh, this is uh, uh, based on uh, uh, societal and environmental well being, uh, including here uh, sustainability and environmental friendliness. Uh, we uh, try to, um, to give some, um, some examples coming from uh, the European Union here. Uh, this uh, uh, focus of uh, um, Europe regarding the climate change, not only coming from Europe, uh, all these technologies like uh, ICT uh, and uh, AI applied to energy systems should improve uh, uh, the environment. And of course, this is connected uh, with uh, green energy solutions for citizens, for instance. We have some, uh, uh, some study cases here. One of them is coming from Germany. Uh, for instance, uh, the German government uh, uh, sees artificial intelligence as a key strategy for mastering some of the greatest challenges of our times, such as uh, climate change and, uh, and pollution. Uh, we, um, we defined uh, some uh, study cases here Yes, as I mentioned, also coming from uh, from Germany, uh, my uh, my colleague Afsal will uh, uh, give you some examples in uh, his presentation. Uh, the key initiative uh, to this end are, in our opinion, the development and adoption of renewable energy sources. Uh, um, let's say uh, to to improve this uh, uh, integration uh, of uh, renewable energy sources. And uh, uh, this uh, uh, definitely, uh, based on artificial intelligence, can, uh, uh, can increase uh, the efficiency of uh, power systems. We have some, uh, some recommendations connected with uh, um, this uh, uh, sixth uh, um, key requirement. Uh, uh, in uh, uh, our opinion, uh, it's very important, uh, in this case, it's very important uh, uh, to, to improve the forecasts uh, uh, this is connected with uh, um, uh, data processing, for instance, uh, uh, which um, will improve the weather data, uh, processing uh, consumption profiles, and uh, uh, based on these uh, mobility patterns, and will facilitate to the end uh, the integration of uh, the different renewables uh, based on better uh, uh, forecasts. Better forecasts uh, uh, also uh, will uh, increase uh, uh, the stability of the grid and security as well. Uh, that's why uh, uh, we believe that uh, uh, this is very important and uh, regulatory use of AI would add another layer of intelligence here that could anticipate much better uh, the actions of market participants. Uh, for instance, uh, market designs to discourage uh, these deviations uh, this error, which uh, uh, are uh, coming from data processing, for instance. Uh, and uh, this uh, uh, um, better forecasts will, uh, will help the society yes, to, um, yes, to look at uh, with the different ICs, yes, a different ICs yes, to um, artificial intelligence and to uh, probably uh, to accept it. Um, 
Okay, I, uh, I will uh, I will move to the last uh, um, key requirement. Uh, uh, the last one, um, the seventh key requirement is uh, uh, connected with uh, accountability, uh, including here auditability minimization of uh, uh, negative impacts. Uh, we uh, believe that uh, um, connected with uh, this um, negative impact, uh, we uh, we can uh, improving the data, the data sets. Yes, this will help us. Yes, to to solve some problems. Um, European Commission uh, uh, announced uh, some requirements related to uh, to this uh, seven key requirement. Uh, we uh, took in consideration uh, the last publications uh, coming not only from European Commission but also uh, from different institutions from US, for instance, uh, uh, Japan, China. Russia, uh, and uh, try to uh, to compare um, the requirements coming from uh, from different sources. Uh, here in this slide, I uh, um, only highlighted um, the requirements coming from European Commission. Uh, some of them uh, are here in this slide. Um, for instance, uh, uh, the use of uh, AI enable products and services must be saved. Uh, they must uh, meet, of course, uh, safety rules and uh, uh, the standards set. Uh, we do believe that uh, uh, we need uh, very clear, uh, many companies actually um, are not following right now uh, the standards uh, when they, they build some, some AI tools, for instance. And this is because, uh, uh, because of the lack of standards, but uh, it's not uh, the, only, uh, the only reason. And uh, we believe that, uh, uh, yes, we, we need very clear uh, standards to, uh, to define these rules. And uh, uh, also, yes, this uh, should be available. Data sets, for instance, would be available uh, open request for any competent authorities. Uh, this is also uh, important uh, from uh, our point of view. And uh, the, as uh, uh, recommendations uh, connected with the, um, the seven key requirement, uh, we uh, believe that uh, uh, accountability should be clearly linked to, to other six key requirements. Uh, they must be created as a whole, uh, especially uh, this seven key requirement should be connected with uh, effectiveness, uh, competence and transparency uh, this cannot be considered only individually. And uh, uh, we also believe that uh, energy sector companies uh, should uh, transparently communicate and report uh, these negative impacts of uh, uh, the AI uh, artificial intelligence uh, products. Um, we, uh, we try to, um, to define here uh, some, some good practices connected not only with the European Commission, but also uh, uh, with uh, um, some institutions coming from, from China, from Russia, from US. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, based on um, um, our uh, research, yes, we suggested some uh, practical uh, recommendations for uh, each, uh, each of these uh, key requirements. To be more credible with um, this, uh, with our practical uh, recommendations, uh, we try to, um, to come to highlight some uh, uh, concrete and practical steps based on existing standards uh, to be uh, competitive for industry for zero. We selected uh, some applications of uh, uh, artificial intelligence in energy industry. And based on this, we came with some um, concrete and practical steps. We suggested some concrete and practical steps uh, based on some uh, case studies. And uh, to the end, yes, uh, to, to draw some conclusions uh, uh, and to be able yes, to, to come with some, uh, some recommendations to the end. I, uh, uh, I would like to... Um, yeah, to say that uh, um, we um, we work together uh, 
this year uh, with the, uh, I work with uh, great people. Uh, I uh, I'm very very um, honored and uh, happy to to um, yes to have a great team around. Um, my colleagues uh, will uh, continue to uh, this presentation. Uh, Sergio will uh, uh, highlight uh, some applications of artificial intelligence. Uh, he will uh, um, come with some uh, examples, some practical steps, uh, uh, which are connected with um, the key requirement number two and number five. Afzal will uh, continue uh, with uh, some practical steps as well, and will uh, uh, detail a little bit of, um, some case studies connected with uh, the key requirement number four and six. And after that, uh, Ronan will uh, will highlight uh, uh, the ethics, laws, and regulations, which are connected with uh, uh, key one and key three, based on some uh, case, uh, case studies. Okay, so uh, uh, Sergio, uh, I think uh, uh, I will uh, pass the stage to you, if you... Okay, 